Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth painting tutorial video. This time finally finishing off the epic task of painting the Mummock War Leader. I tell you what, it's been a marathon and us dwarves are natural sprinters. But I'm almost there now, just the lovely friendly guy to paint on the top that AMR skewers with a spear. Rest in peace. Anyway, I started with a bit of red goop on the base to match the big old base, which you can see in my previous video for tips about, and then I start with Doomball Brown as a base coat for the skin. Make sure you don't miss the arms, dim biceps. Then I move on to the armour. Now I'm not sure if his armour is actually gold or not, but I use Retributor armour to start it off anyway. If you look at it, it has bamboo bits on top, but underneath it's gold, I think? Anyway, I go with it on the arm armour as well and the shin pads too. I'm sure they have more armoury names for those, but arm armour and shin pads works for me. Then onto his kilt, which I paint in red gore. Also paint the flag on his back with that as well. You know the biggest advantage of living in Switzerland? Their flag is a big plus. <laughs> Apologies for the cheesy pun, and let's be honest, their cheese is a whole lot better. Anyway, uh, I don't know why I'm talking about Switzerland. Uh, anyway, back to the task at hand. I painted the other half of the kilt in Nagaroth Knight purple. Then, keeping up with the kilt which I understand is a reality show about Scottish garments bickering constantly about how they got famous in the first place. I'm distracted anyway. Uh, a blood red highlight for that kilt. I'll be honest, it's quite a heavy highlight, leaving very little of the darker red underneath. Only the deepest folds are left with red gore in them. On the flag too, don't worry about getting any paint on the frames because we'll go over that again later anyway. With Reichland Flesh Shade, I give the gold and red a good old soaking, and they're not careful about getting some on the skin either. Then with Talon Flesh, I highlight the skin. It's worth remembering that this is a highlight, not a base coat. The war leader has dark skin, so be careful not to cover it up with too much pink. But highlights are worth doing, even if I do eventually shade them again to mute down that white skin tone later on. Then I realised I'd forgotten to paint the shoulder pads or top of his shirt anyway, so I did that in red gore quickly. Then returning to the skin, I wanted to make his skin look a little shiny, so I used chestnut wash, but you could always use the gloss version of Reichland Flesh Shade for that. Just soak that skin in it to give it a good dark shine. Now onto the detailing. I used Scorch Brown for basically everything we haven't painted yet. That's the frames on the flag, the spear, the wicker. Just be careful on those frames to avoid getting any on the flag itself. It's a delicate, ultra detailed model, so well worth making sure that that's right. With a bit of chain mail, I just paint the blade in this weird, swordy, speary thing. I've yet to actually have him properly fight in a combat and able to use said device, which is probably a good thing because it means my mummock has survived more than not. I do a bit of a mix of paints here, using Warlock Purple and Nagaroth Knight, but probably just using Xerius Purple would work. Xerius? If that's how you pronounce it. But then I highlight the purple part of the kilt with a bit of that. This part, it really is a joy to finish of the folds of the cloth there. Then with Blood Red, or Evil Sun Scarlet, I work on all the rest of the material. Again, it's a similarly pleasurable process, just carefully highlighting the edges of each fold. Make sure you don't forget the shoulders as I'd done earlier. It's just something satisfying about painting folds in clothes on models. Mm. 
Now we're really getting onto the fine details. I use bleached bone to paint some of the binding on the frame on his back. I kind of dry brush highlighted it, if that's a thing, but be careful to avoid getting any on the frame itself or the swordy speary thing. Then I painted his shoes grey, which I'll be honest, I don't even usually bother with. Usually I just do paint them black or leave them un kind of unfinished. Um, but I thought I should make the effort here because he is like, well, he's the royal war leader. Then with Graveyard Earth, I started re-detailing the framework on his armor as well as highlighting the main wooden bits on his back and on the spear. I dot a bit of badab black wash on his feet and his spear as well. Then I crack straight on with using white to paint his eyes. As ever, this is a fiddly process, so I have to go back with some flesh tone to tidy up the eye outlines, but I think it always works in the end. Sometimes I can't believe it's this fiddly, but you get used to it and practice really does make perfect, especially on heroes. I also paint the teeth in white and dot some bright blood red on the tongue at this stage. And of course, iris skit and dot the eyes with some black. Nice and carefully does it. Apologies for those cheesy puns. Now, I go back to the framework on the armour because I didn't think it was quite standing out enough. This dark brown Rhinox hide paint or scorch brown really helps provide the definition I think was missing. Then I return to it once more with the original graveyard earth and highlight it. I think it makes a big difference. The original tones just look too similar, the gold and the earthy brown, so it's great to give them a bit of separation with that even darker brown. Now onto the trickiest bit, but which is absolutely essential. With Doomble Brown, I start work on the face paint. Here I just block out the area of the head I'll be painting the white pattern on. It's subtle, but the difference in tones of the skin and the reddish brown make a contrast, which shows it's not just the white onto the skin directly and gives it that definition and idea of that dark face paint as well. Still in real time here, I continue to carefully block out a pattern onto Mr. Mahood's face. I start with little triangles of white above each eyebrow, make them look nice and sharp and pronounced. Then with the rest, I simply dry brush the white onto the raised part of the head. I think those bumps are actually meant to be some sort of scarification or jewellery, but I found on the one on the actual mimic that painting the lines between it just made the head look messy. So I went with this on the foot model and I think it looks really just way better, but you can try and paint in between those gaps. Let me know how you think it went. Then I continue by painting his nose fully white to continue that pattern. And after that I head on to painting the logo on his banner. You can come up with pretty much any logo, but I find that matching logos on the Oliphant and on the banners across the force is a great idea. So don't go too ornate unless you're really confident in your ability. If you can paint the Sistine Chapel on it, go for it if you, if you feel like you can. But I think just going with a few simple logos or sort of shapes, simple shapes, they work best. So I just went with a few chevrons and an arrow, which I think looks good enough. Also use a bit of black to separate those white lines out nicely too. Then coming to the end, using bubonic brown or Zamisi desert, I dry brush that lovely deserty yellow over the top of the red base coat. While I'm letting that dry, I forgot to highlight the purple though. So with warlock purple, I return for an edge highlight just to sharpen up the edges of the folds of his kilt. Then just to finish it off, because I still wasn't too happy with the definition of the framework on his armor, I gave that final sharp edge highlight of a white. Now that really makes it stand out much more than just the plain Graveyard Earth did. And there we have it, I finally finished the Mummock War Leader. All four parts of the series were absolutely epic tasks, uh, not just in terms of actually doing them physically myself, but also editing it all together. It's taken a lot longer than I expected, but that's just the case with uh, the way I do my painting tutorials. I really hope you've gotten something out of it, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the series as it progresses along. Um, also, thank you very much for all the very kind comments and everyone who subscribes. If you don't subscribe and you've somehow stumbled across me, well, thanks 
thanks for joining us for this video. Uh, do hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you love the Middle Earth strategy battle game, I've started a brand new podcast. Uh, slightly different idea to the painting tutorials and the uh, the battle reports that I occasionally do. Uh, this podcast called Entmoot is uh, is basically about tournaments and gaming and very much uh, very much more uh, uh, towards the competitive side of things. Uh, it's not too competitive because I'm not too competitive, but uh, it involves me heading off to various different tournaments and interviewing the the tournament organisers and the winners of said tournament about the list they use and why. Uh, so please do check that out. Just search Entmoot and I'll put the link below. Uh, hopefully we'll get it all up on uh, iTunes very soon and, and you'll be able to subscribe. But thank you very much in the meantime for joining me for another uh, Battle Games in Middle Earth YouTube video. Uh, I'll be back again very soon. The next video I'm planning will be Dwarven in Stature. Thanks for watching.